And so as manufacturers, producers and importers there are solutions to your foreign exchange challenges. Awesome. Hello, I'm Sandra. Comfort Zone Manufacturing. Mr. Frank, Amigo Manufacturing. Fantastic presentation by the way. Thank you. You sounded so confident in your presentation. How are you coping with the current economic recession in the country? You know, as manufacturers we are largely dependent on local market. Many of our finished goods are piled up in the warehouse. Because demands from buyers have reduced, what do you think is the way out? You are right actually, I'm also experiencing the same situation. The current decline is making it difficult to sell locally. But I'm already preparing to take advantage of the African Continental Free Trade Area, FCFTA. FCFTA? Are you not aware of the fact that the whole of Africa have come together to sign an agreement to trade together duty-free? And that means, after manufacturing my products I can ship it to 53 African countries without payment of duty. Awesome. Which is an extra market for me. This program is starting next year and I'm already preparing to take advantage of it. Wow thank you so much, how are you going about it? And how can I also prepare for it? Well, I'm currently training myself and other staffs to take advantage of this. And I've found an executive diploma program in export business, from the American Institute of Extended Studies to enable me achieve this. This is great, thanks so much for the information, how can I also enroll for this program? To register for an executive diploma in export business management, and take advantage of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Simply call 0809124449 or send an email to tradacademy at 3 timpixcom Welcome, sir. This is the second time I'm coming to see you. I need to know how to go about this export business. Please do relax, sir. With all due respect, I need to see a manager. You guys need to be able to give me enough information about this export business. I'm sorry, sir. The bank is a financial institution. We offer financial advice to the best of our knowledge. This is just waste of time. My manager might be able to give you some recommendations. Please do hold on. Hello, sir. Please do come with me to my office. So I was told you needed information on export business. Well, sir, a lot of opportunities have passed by me in the past few months. I have received so many orders for my product and services abroad I just don't know how to go about it. Well it's a good thing you came here today. One of Nigerian's foremost trade consulting firm 3T Impex now provides export support services. For both intending and existing exporters. Really? Support services like? Well, name it. Export market advisory, export product advisory. Export skill acquisition e-learning, export pricing advisory, export contract advisory, export paperwork advisory, export finance advisory, to mention just a few. Wow this is like a dream come true, how do I contact them to know more? Simply call 0809124449 or send a mail to tradacademy at 3 timpixcom Export service designed just for you. Subscribe to 3T Export Support Services now. Wow man you are doing quite good. You are not doing bad yourself. How is your business doing these days, with the economic decline here and there? You don't look like you are being affected at all. Well it's affecting everyone, I just found a way of, you know? Expanding market for my services. Really? Tell me more. Let's talk in my office. So basically, I found a way of taking my services to other countries in the world. Hence I don't have to depend so much, 
on the current economic situation in our country. Oh my god this is awesome. But how did you go about it? Well, thanks to 3T Impex and American Institute of Extended Studies, I was able to acquire skills and competence to take my skills to the world through Executive Diploma and Service Export Management. That's just great. Is this program just for everyone? You know I'm not into ICT service like you. Well, the following services and many more can be exported. They are ICT, Professional Services, Management Consulting, Marketing, Training and Education, Engineering and Architectural Services, Entertainment Services, Customer Services and Call Center, Graphics and Photography, HR Related Services. Don't get me started on the benefits. Earning in foreign exchange, increased sales volume and so much more. I'm not waiting to hear more. I'm calling 08036522946 right away. You can also send a mail to tradacademy at 3 timpexcom That's it. I'm signing up right away. To sign up or know more about our services, simply call 0803652946 or send a mail to tradacademy at 3 timpexcom Hey Paul, what a surprise to see you, in the port, of all places. Life is full of surprises I guess. You and this your sense of humor. I came to relax at the river bank, before I sighted you. So, what on earth brings you to the port? Actually, I came to oversee the export of my products. <laughs> You must be joking, right? <laughs> no, I'm not. When did you start producing? Not to talk of exporting? I actually started some few months ago. I now produce and export processed food items. And basically I am here to oversee the shipment myself. Wow. It's been barely 15 months since I last saw you. Won't you tell me how all this happened? <laughs> of course I will. Let's go grab a sit. So how did you become an exporter in such a short time? Well, the last time we met I told you of my plans on exiting paid employment. So I was looking out for a business to go into. A few weeks later, I came across a training program organized by 3T Impex Trade Academy, one of Nigerian's foremost trade consulting companies. Really? Yes, the training is tagged. From export novice to export legend. Sounds great, tell me more. After six months I completed the diploma in export business management. And in another six months, I successfully produced and packaged, even without having a manufacturing company. Amazing. I know right? And all this is aside the free export advisory services, free export license, free books and audio materials, to mention just a few. Wow, thank the heavens I came down to the port today. I am definitely considering this. How can one get started? Simply call 0809-124-4449 or visit www.globaltradecollege.com. You can also send an email to tradacademy at 3 timpexcom Be a Paul, own your own export business and become an export legend today. All right, good evening. Um, even though it's a public holiday, uh, many probably are now at work, but we could not meet last week because of the big challenge in Nigeria. Um, um, but we have to go ahead and do it this week. So we have it recorded for those that probably will not be able to make it for other engagement. So we're on to part nine of the exploring products of Nigeria to African market. 
I'm sure by now for those that have been joining us in the past, you understand the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. The agreement that brings the whole of Africa together to be able to trade um, under this agreement. 54 countries have signed. Nigeria is not yet a state party because we are yet to ratify even though we have signed and there are indications that that will be done on or before the end of the year because trading is to start January 1. And we have been looking at different products that Nigeria can export, that other African countries can export. We're basically looking at what are current products being traded on the African continent? Current product being traded on the African continent. And that is what we are exploring, current product being traded on the African continent. Uh, for those probably joining for the first time, we have the Telegram channel. This Telegram channel uh, house all the previous episodes of this program, all the previous episodes of this program. You can get it on the Telegram channel, uh, on like WhatsApp. Telegram keeps all the previous ones. So even if you just join, you surely will be able to have all the previous one. I will also drop the link on the chat for those that might just want to click on the link to be able to join. Then there is this network of traditional oil exporters of Nigeria, MPNEM, that was just newly inaugurated. The board has been constituted and they should, they should start work on or before the end of the year. So if you are aspiring exporter, you might want to visit the website and also join quite a number of benefits for being part or member of the non-oil network of practicing non-oil exporter of Nigeria. All right, today we'll start with leather footwear. Leather footwear. In 2018, Africa imported as much as it exported leather footwear. This is among few products that um, the amount spent in importing is equal to almost similar to amount spent in exporting. You know, in some cases, whereas amount of import might be over a billion dollar, but what we export might be less than $100,000 or $1 million or $2, $200 million. So, but in this case, we're having seven, $607 million in import and $678 million dollars in export, $678 million in export. Footwear are shoes, but leather shoes, not rubber shoes, leather shoes. So if I'm thinking of a market in Africa that would like to ship such product to, I should be looking at South Africa. Nigeria is not doing badly, Nigeria. Morocco, Egypt, Angola, Algeria, Kenya, Libya, Mauritius. These are those who currently import this item. And I know for a fact that Nigeria can do this. I mean, we are doing a lot of this in the uh, clusters of wears, both clothing and shoes in Aba. So Nigeria will have what it takes to take advantage of the leather footwear market under the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. On the export side, we already have two giants taking up over almost 80%, sorry, almost 90% of the market. Can you imagine North African countries, Tunisia and Morocco? And by the time we check, you will realize that those that have more bovine, those that sell more cattle are not Tunisia and Morocco. Those that sell more cattle might not be Tunisia and Morocco. We might be able to get there today. But they are the one that produce a lot of leather footage. So probably most likely import most of the raw materials being the leathers. But they are the one that is producing leather footwear. They are the one producing leather footwear and exporting the leather footwear in Africa. And the trend line also shows an increase. Like I said, I've said that repeatedly in the past, things that human beings need 
and youth regularly, especially those they require for survival, we keep growing in Africa. Why? Because of the humongous, because of the humongous uh, amount of, um, sorry, humongous amount of population and the fact that that population is still growing is also a major issue. Then we have cheese. Cheese. <laughs> I'm sure some people will be wondering which one is cheese again? Why is cheese a major one like this? You know, you know the reason why I like data a lot is because of there's so many things going on that you probably do not even have an idea of what it is until you begin to check data to see what people are doing. To see what people are doing. Cheese is a milk-based food that is produced in wide-ranging flavor, texture, and form. Hundreds of types of cheese are produced from different countries around the world. And Nigeria is not left out in the production of cheese. But what is amazing to me is that Africa is importing $635 million worth of cheese and only exporting 364. So we are actually importing twice as much as we are exporting. Telling me, huge opportunity. Huge, huge, huge opportunity. In Africa. <laughs> For those producing cheese. Is that not interesting? <laughs> there are some product that we, look at footwear that we just talked about. Look at footwear. No, just. Just take a look at footwear we just talked about. There are some products you probably never thought of before. And now you are realizing that this particular product is a cash cow. It's a cash cow. Even though you probably are not even aware of it before. And sincerely, that is the essence of this program, the essence of this weekly program in which we talk to ourselves about all the opportunities available within this space in Nigeria is to increase the level of awareness. Is to increase the level of awareness of what is possible in Africa which people are already doing anyway, what is possible in Africa? Which people are already doing? Cheese, can you imagine? <laughs> but you know, like I said, as long as it is food, as long as it is food, be rest assured, be rest assured that there are huge market for it. Why? Our population, our population keep growing. The population grow more and rapidly where there is less development, where there is less development, where there is more unemployment, where there is no infrastructure, no power, no light, and people have to sleep on time. Someone said, the more women are kept in the boardroom, the lesser the population. He said, but the more women go to the bedroom, the higher the population. Women would be born in the boardroom if there are jobs. And that's for me, do you know what has happened? The Asians and Europeans, particularly Asians, Chinese leading the way, have mastered this and they are taking advantage of this seriously. So they set up businesses, that is basically into food, cheap to buy in Africa. 
and my heart cry is to see a situation in which these people are not the ones that will take advantage of the AFCFTA. Because what I see them do to come and set up those factories here. So instead of selling to us, which might not be as profitable again because of the increase in duty, because of the fact that there are more competition now from within, then we see a situation where a number of them might be sourcing their product. A number of Africa might be sourcing their product from within Africa. And those that ship this product to Africa, we have to either come and set up in Africa or lose that market. So what are the major importers of cheese, just in case you want to export cheese? Egypt. You will notice something. Egypt is an exporter at the same time an importer. Like I said, you see this play out in many countries. You see this play out in many countries in which same country is importing what is exporting. The difference more often than not is the brand or type or variant because there are so many type of cheese. Even though Egyptians are the largest exporter of cheese in Africa, but they also still import. <laughs> they also still import. So don't be surprised to see that. I've seen that a lot, for, for, particularly for South Africa. Can you imagine? South Africa is here also. South Africa. Even Morocco is having the same issue. So three major exporters. Egyptians, 75%. The Moroccans, 17.5%. And the South Africans, 4.9, 47 or 4.69%. But do you notice something about these people? That the same country importing, also exporting. Besides them, you also have Algeria as a market to consider. Libya, another market to consider. Mauritius, another market to consider. And do you notice what I said again? This theory for many products has worked. The theory of the higher the growth in population, the higher the demand for increase. <laughs> the higher the increase, or the more the uh, import of item being done in Africa, particularly when it has to do with food required for human survival. Particularly when it has to do with food required for human survival. So who are the competitors you have to contend with if you want to export cheese? The Egyptian, who own the 75%, Morocco, 17%, South Africa, 4.6%, Tunisia, 2.2%, and Mauritius, 1.1%. And that product is bovine. Bovine. If you are thinking what bovine is, that's another name for cow or cattle. That's another name for cow. Now, this is not frozen bovine meat. Oh. This is the cattle itself. You know, <laughs> as seen export of the cattle. You know, we've done frozen bovine before. Frozen bovine meat before. Now we're not looking at the bovine meat. Oh. We are looking at the cattle itself, the cattle itself, cattle are being exported in Africa. Cattle are being exported in Africa. Cattle are being imported in Africa. So Africa import cattle. Always remember, when we talk about import, always remember, the import in this case is not necessarily only from outside of Africa. These data involve imports of Africa, either intra-African imports or extra-African imports. Either intra-African import or extra-African import. What is important is that this is the aggregate of item being imported by Africans either from other African country or from outside of Africa, from Europe, from Asia, and probably from America. And probably from America. 
who are the major importer? Now, do you notice something? Do you notice something? I don't know if you notice something here. Egyptians are the largest exporter of cheese and Egyptians are the largest importer of bovine. <laughs> do you notice a connection? <laughs> do you notice a connection? Egyptians are the largest importer. Do you notice a connection? The largest importer? Of the largest importer of cattle is the largest exporter of cheese. You know, cheese is made from milk and the milk are from cattle. Cheese is made from milk and the milk are from cattle. So who are the major importer of bovine? Egyptians, Algerians, Libya, Morocco, major importer, major importer, who are importing about 90%, about 90% of the import of the item, about 90% of the import of this item, about 90%. How about the exporters? How about the exporters? Sudan. Mm. If you are familiar with, uh, there is even a particular country that I think the name has Sudan in it. If I, if I remember my agreed very well in secondary school. Then we have Somalia. Sudan and Somalia constitute over about 80% of exporters of cattle. And South Africa is not also uh, joking. South Africa is also very serious on this cattle matter. <laughs> South Africa is serious on this cattle matter. <laughs> the cattle matter is, in, South Africa is interested in the cattle matter. And that's why you are seeing this volume of import from South Africa sorry, volume of export rather, from South Africa. The volume of export from Southern or South Africa. Another interesting one in my opinion, for me, I think this is very, very interesting. And I think it's interesting because who would have thought that there's so much opportunity within this place? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? There is so much opportunity of this magnitude just to think of cattle. <laughs> just to think of cattle. It's amazing. But you know what? That is the reality that we face. The father cattle is a major, major foreign exchange Anna, for some countries. And I don't think Nigeria should be left out in this. I think, you know, recently we had issue with Ruga. You know, sometimes you have problem, but your problem is a good problem. We had Ruga, we had Kachu, uh, Kachu uh, Colony, we have Ranch. You know, so, so much issues. Of course, because there are so many suspicions among ourselves about the agenda or plan of some people. And I'm asking myself, rather than saying they should not come, which is OK if you don't want them to come, why don't you do it yourself? Why don't you build those ranches yourself? Why don't you take advantage of it yourself? I have maintained, and I keep maintaining, that no Nigerian state, and, and, and I will probably have to repeat that, that, session, that kind of that seminar again sometimes in the new year. No Nigerian state, no Nigerian state is not viable or unviable. 
what has happened is the people that come in don't have the intention of generating income. They actually only have the intention of coming to take whatever it is coming. And how do you actually run a country or run a state or run a, a, a public enterprise when you are not thinking of earning income but waiting for someone to give you income? Do you know what that means? That means as a governor, if I fold my arm and refuse to do anything in a whole month, wake up, sleep, eat, watch movie, wake up, sleep, eat, watch movie, money will come at the end of the month. How do you expect such a state to grow? There's no motivation. There's no incentive. And how do you expect that someone that is thinking of finding solution is the one that will win? Because a lot of people want to go and end, and, and, and what's the name? Grab as much as they can. Why? Because, because you don't need to be able to do anything. You just need to become the governor and you automatically become rich with your security vote and other emolument, both legal and illegal you have access to. So that is the problem. And I'm saying, if we are doing this volume with bovine, that's a lot of money. Huge opportunity for bovine. And the trend line also show again, my theory is still being proven right. The trend line also show again that the trend is growing. It's growing. Remember your competitors, as far as export of this product is concerned, South Africa, Sudan, Ethiopia, Egypt, and Mozambique. Sauce and seasoning. Mm. This look more like it for me. This one, a lot of SMEs should be interested in this one. A lot of SMEs. From those that package pepper to ginger to garlic to cinnamon to uh, um, different kind of spices. I mean, so many of them. So many of them. So many spices. Look at the amount used to import spices in Africa. Do you know Nigeria is 20? <laughs> Interesting. Nigeria is contributing a whopping 20% in import of spices. Do you know the Nigerian farmers are peasant, 75%? We have not used up to half of our arable land. And a lot of our produce perish as poverty losses, close to 40, 50%. And, you know, it, it's sad, really. I, I'm sad to see this data that we're doing 20%. It's, it's sad, it's sad, sincerely sad. That Nigeria is the largest. So South Africa and Egypt will be looking at Nigeria, you know? South Africa and Egypt will be looking at Nigeria, Tunisia, Kenya. Senegal, everybody will be looking at Nigeria. That Nigeria is a major. Nobody is closer to Nigeria. No near. We take a lot of spices in this country. Nobody is near Nigeria. <laughs> Nobody is near Nigeria. As far as spices are concerned, as far as spices are concerned. No one is near Nigeria. And Nigeria, therefore, is becoming, has become rather a market of interest as far as the African Continental Free Trade Agreement is concerned. Where are other, who are the other importers? South Africa, Benin, Ghana, Sierra Leone, Guinea, Morocco, Angola. You notice that this seasoning made a lot of African countries, unlike the others, a lot of African countries have a, a great share. Only that Nigeria is taking 20% and no one is near close. No one is even, no one is even 7%. 
No one is sick, he said. No one is there to be near Nigeria as far as this is concerned. As far as this is concerned. Amazing stuff, right? A huge opportunity for people that want to ship into Nigeria. But I am of the opinion that Nigeria can actually do a lot of this also in terms of export. From curry to thyme to pepper to ginger to cinnamon, all sorts of spices are available out there. That's anyone interested can have access to. My theory is still right, is still proven correctly. The trend line of the demand for spices is on the increase, the trend line for the demand. Now, what I see something in the chat below that a, num a good chunk of African countries are placing serious duties on these spices, or sauces and seasonings. The implication of this is we should be able to have some respite in terms of reduction in the cost of importing these items under the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, depending on different countries anyway, depending on different countries. So the competitors are South Africa, Egyptians, Tunisia, Kenya, and Senegal. Flavored water. You see this a lot outside Nigeria, Europe, America, even in Asia. But African also are not doing badly in importing it. So now, this should let you know something. You know, an average person thinking of export in Nigeria, do you know what they think of? Cocoa, cashew, ginger, uh, hibiscus. Uh, and those are the things that have kept us small for years. It has kept us small for years. You will notice something that there are some regular products, run of the mill products, that we probably are not even looking at at all, but with huge, huge, huge opportunity for sales. Water, can you imagine? Flavored water. Water, flavored water. The import of flavor water is like times three of our export. Nigeria is also a major importer. You know, you see this flavor water in supermarket. You see it majorly in supermarket. Importer of flavor water, South Africa, 12.8%. Libya, 10.5%. Uh, Ghana, about 10%. Nigeria, 6.27%. 6.27%. Nigeria, Zimbabwe, 4.65%. Zimbabwe. 4.65%. Who are those exporting it? Zambian. So the export market, South Africa, Libya, Nigeria, Ghana. But who are the exporters? Zambia. So I'm wondering why Zambia is doing so much of water export, flavor water, by the way. Can you see that Nigeria also exports flavor water? <laughs> like I said, it's all about preference. Preference, number one, sometimes, some might not even know that 
people produce in Nigeria, but some might prefer some of our brand, and that probably explains the reason why they import those items, even though it's produced in their country. So Zambia, 24%, South Africa, 19.6%, Egypt, 16.4%, Nigeria, 6.4%, Morocco, 4.8%, Ghana, about 4%, Uganda, 3.7%, and these are the major, major, major importer. Trend line, growing consistently growing, growing, consistently growing. The trend line shows a consistent and continuous increase in the rate of consumption of this product. So if I'm going to go into this business, I should be ready to compete with Zambia, compete with South Africa, compete with Egypt. And when you're thinking of competition, you need to ask very important and critical questions. So you can be sure you are prepared actually to take on the competition, to take on the competition. Another product, processed fish. You know, this particular product also connects a lot with our people. This is where people that do smoke fish lies. Smoke fish people. And you know, in Nigeria today, what has happened in Nigeria today is that um, A lot of people are into aquaculture. So the processing of fish is increasing. In fact, there's so many of that in Lagos and its environment, and a lot in Ogun State in particular. In Ogun State, Ijebu, Ijebu. Ogun State in particular. So we have a huge potential, but look at the figure. Just see the figure. 11, I'm sorry, 1.11 billion. I'm also excited to see that Africa is doing a lot of processed fish export. Champion by Morocco. Champion by Morocco. But who are the importers? Egypt? Libya, South Africa, Ghana being the major importer. Egypt, 17.2%, Libya, 15.2%, South Africa, 12.3%, Ghana, 7.56%, major importer. How about exporters? Major exporters. Morocco, Mauritius, Seychelles, Ghana. Morocco. <laughs> major, major exporter of fish, Morocco. Seychelles, Mauritius, and I'm not surprised about Ghana also. I'm not surprised about Ghana. I'm not surprised about Ghana. Ghana is doing a lot in terms of fish. Now, with the growth of aquaculture in Nigeria, I think we need to do a lot of promotion of SMEs for export, sincerely. And the, the only way Nigeria will win in AFCFTA is if SME are, because sometimes we just concentrate on the large corporate and forget that Nigeria have, according to MBS last report, over 40 million SMEs. Think for a moment. If each of those businesses can hire just one more person, just one more person, 40 million Nigeria will be off the street. 
being able to take care of their needs. 40 million will likely be lifted out of poverty because today in Nigeria, over 80 million are living in extreme poverty, less than $1 a day, extreme poverty. So I'm thinking, you know, and I'll say this is what some countries are doing. South Africa is doing a lot in this regard. And I think Ghana is doing a lot in this regard also. There are a couple of countries doing a lot in this regard. And what are they doing? They are doing a lot to get ready for the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. And how are they getting ready? SMEs. SMEs. They are engaging their SMEs. They are empowering their SMEs. They are supporting their SMEs. Because they know the engine room, the engine room for growth of any economy is SMEs. In fact, in some countries, 90% of the jobs are provided by SMEs in some country. 90%, 90%, 90% of the job are provided by SMEs. Nine, 90% <laughs> of the job are provided by SME alone. So we, you know, if we are not very strategic as far as AFCFTA is concerned, we might just find a situation where it's going to go, and I pray this does not happen, which is why we're contributing our own quota to put information out there. This does not happen. I pray it doesn't go the way the ETLS had gone. That it doesn't go the way the ETLS had gone. ETLS is ECOWAS Trade Liberalization Scheme. ECOWAS Trade Liberalization Scheme. The ECOWAS Trade Liberalization Scheme, ETLS, was to promote trade in West Africa. By the way, that scheme is, that scheme is 30 years old. That scheme is 30 years old. Guess how many Nigerian companies are registered? How many Nigerian companies are registered? Less than a thousand. How many products? Less than 2,000 products in 30 years. Someone is asking a question. Does it mean that we don't export processed fish in Nigeria? How do I key into this area? How can I export processed fish? We don't export it enough. So if we are not on the radar, we export. I know a few people that, have, that, that are probably in that space. We are not doing enough. You know, we are, look at the total value now. We are looking at billions of dollars here. We are looking at billions. People that are exporting, you know, there's no support. Just small, small, small export here and there. Maybe a few thousands of dollars. But here we are looking at billions of dollars. Billions of dollars. Billions of dollars. Someone said the major fish we farm in Nigeria is catfish. Do the importing country eat a lot of catfish? Sardines are produced by Morocco, is widely eaten. Anna, thank you very much. I think you have given us some insight there. You know, what we try to do on this platform is to provoke further research. And I'm happy with what Anna just provided. What you need to do, if you're interested in any product, you need to then go and ask questions. If Morocco is exporting a lot of fish, what type of fish is it? What kind of fish is it? Is it a type of fish also we can produce in Nigeria? Why is everybody doing catfish for crying out loud? Why? But there are other fishes that Nigeria even import. So why is it that we're doing catfish? Is there a reason for that? Or because everybody's used to it? I don't know. But 
the essence of this conversation is to always provoke a debate, to provoke a kind of discussion that will help everybody that is interested to go back and do some further research to validate what we've said and also to take it further in looking for, okay, how do I, number one, what do Morocco? Someone have said now Morocco do a lot of sanding. So why can't we grow sanding and do something similar? If that's what's making Morocco to be taking 42% of this $1.75 billion market in Africa. That's the conversation we should be having. Those are further research we need to do to be able to ensure that we take advantage of the AFCFTA. To be able to know that we take advantage of the AFCFTA. So Moroccans, Seychelles, Kenyans, and Mauritius, and as usual, my theory is still correct. So far, so good. Trend line show continuous growth and increase in the demand for this item. <laughs> in the demand for this item. And remember your competitors, the Moroccans, Mauritius, Seychelles, Nian, and the Ivorians, and the Ivorians, and the Ivorians. This is a huge market, 1.7, 1.75 billion. I think that's a lot. I think that's a lot. Then there is frozen, sorry, non-fillet frozen fish. Non-fillet frozen fish. Non-fillet frozen fish. Non-fillet frozen fish. You know, I know Nigeria do a lot <laughs> of import of frozen fish. A lot. A lot. Frozen fish. These are fish that are still complete I'm frozen. The head is still there. You know when you do filleting, you remove the hair, you remove the bone, and just the meat inside is being it is. But what is interesting about the importance of fish in Africa is that Nigeria is the leader. Nigeria is the leader. Doing about 19% out of 3.4 billion. I remember vividly as a banker. I left banking about 10 years ago. As a banker, I remember very, very well that when I, I was in trade in the defunct Diamond Bank, now Access Bank, when I'm processing trade transactions then, no fish import value is less than a million dollars. None, none. If I, and there are some very popular importer in Nigeria, majority who are foreigners, None of their, if they are opening a form M or doing an LC for an import of fish, is at least a million dollar. At least a million dollar. This is as far back as 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, a million dollars. So I'm not surprised at all. I'm not surprised at all that we are having Nigeria taking up this huge amount, or more than half a billion, being used to import fish that is produced locally. Frozen fish, frozen fish. So if you want to export frozen fish, who are the competitors? Mauritius again. Sorry, Mauritania again, rather. Mauritania, South Africa, Morocco. Morocco here again. Morocco here again. Seychelles again. So choose again and Senegal, and Senegal, and Senegal. So these are the major contenders, or rather competitors that you must learn to deal with if you're going to play in that space. If you're going to play in that space. Now, can we look at chocolate? 
Can we look at chocolate? Can we look at chocolate? You know, chocolate, by the way, chocolate, by the way, is um, a major item that African is supposed to be exporting. You know, sometimes we need to ask ourselves this question. Why is it that what we are supposed to be exporting, we don't export it? Why is it? Why is it that which we're supposed to be exporting, we don't export it? So you know why for chocolate is so important for us? Do you know that Africa produce, not even Africa, West Africa produce 75%, 75%, a whopping 75% of cocoa in the world. So 75% of cocoa production in the world is from West Africa, not just Africa, West Africa. The total market size for cocoa is $10 billion. So Africa is controlling 75% of it, about 7.5 billion. But that's not a good news. That's not a good news. That's not a good news. The value chain of cocoa in the world is over $100 billion. The value chain of cocoa is over hundred billion dollars, and the chocolate market alone is thirty billion dollars. So, question: Who is making money? Who is making money? Who is making money? The African producing the cocoa beans, or Netherlands? Who is the major? buyer of cocoa beans, Netherlands, who is a major buyer as far as cocoa beans is concerned. As far as cocoa beans is concerned. And a major exporter of cocoa cake, cocoa butter, cocoa liquor, and different varieties of cocoa. Look at this depressing news. Look at this depressing news. In another uh, by 2050, by 2050, if the rate of climate change continue to increase at this alarming rate, the temperature, the temperature of the world at that time will not make cocoa production to do well in West Africa will not make cocoa production to do well in West Africa. So about two years ago, I saw a report. And this report says that mass, I'm sure you know mass, mass is a, chocolate, a major chocolate producer in the world. Mass, is funding a research in America, I think California or thereabout, in a university in America, to come up with a new variety of cocoa beans that will be able to stand the temperature that is likely going to be in the world, the level of temperature, because of the level of CO2 in the atmosphere, that will be in the world by 2050, because their projection is that at this rate, cocoa production might go into extinction by 2050. That's just 30 years away. That's just 30 years away. 
That's just 30 years away. So they are funding this research in America. So the question you ask yourself is this. Who are those that their livelihood depend on cocoa? Primarily Africans, West Africans. Who are those that should be more concerned about the extinction of cocoa? If I thought they are even looking at that, West Africans. Who are those that are doing the research for the sustainability of cocoa in the world? <laughs> Americans. Let me tell you what will happen. They are going to export that cocoa beans to us eventually. We are going to be buying it and they will dictate who you can sell to. And they will dictate who you can sell to. If we don't do our own research to develop a variety that will stand that temperature in future. Back to chocolate. In Africa, almost $600 million is used to import chocolate. But I'm happy and delighted that out of about 400 30 million of chocolate or OS is done by Africans. Cote d'Ivoire, I'm impressed, very much impressed with Cote d'Ivoire. Cote d'Ivoire is the largest exporter of cocoa beans in Africa and also the largest producer of chocolate. That's commendable. I must also commend Egyptians who are not producer or major producer of cocoa beans, but a major, major exporter of, of chocolate. But a major, major exporter of chocolate. Good evening, Dele. I want to discuss previous precious stone with you after the meeting. I mean, okay, you can chat me, Lucky. How do we take advantage of the digital trade in Africa? Please, sir, talk on logistic in Africa because I need FCFT. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, when maybe when I'm running this session or when I when I'm discussing, um, you know, this series we end in another um, in another maybe eight sessions or five to, um, in another five to eight sessions, I should end this, session, this particular series. I'm gonna start another series in which I'll be analyzing the market in Africa one by one. So maybe when we begin to discuss that, I'll be able to answer this Aisha's question. But for logistics right away, I can say, logistics in Africa is a challenge, no doubt. There is this, what is called PIDA, PIDA initiative. PIDA is called, is actually, um, PIDA is actually um, um, uh, project, I think it's, I don't know if it's project, I think it's project on development of um, uh, infrastructure development in Africa. I think project for environmental development in Africa, PIDA. Now, the PIDA project, the PIDA project is not moving as fast as is expected because there is no incentive. So my, my opinion and theory is that if AFCFC take off, infrastructure will naturally follow. Why? There will be need to move good more within West Africa, within Africa. There are about 15 or 16 landlocked countries in Africa. There are about 15 or 16 landlocked countries in Africa. So there will be need to move goods across Africa. There will be need to move goods across Africa and building of rail and to building more road to toll it, to collect fees, to recover the money will become a, very, a good incentive. So investor can easily come in to build more rail because now we want to move a lot of goods by rail and to build more road. But I must also tell you that Nigeria, Nexim Bank, together with the private sector, have what is called C-Link project. The C-Link project is designed to enable movement of good within the African continent. So in fact, C-Link is designed in a way that they are going to drag the lower Niger so that right in Lokoja, I can, those from the north can bring their goods. They don't bring it to Lagos from local that they can load, join the ship to African countries. So the ceiling project is supposed to connect different countries in Africa. It's a private sector driven initiative, but funded, co-funded by Nexim Bank to be able to drive the movement of goodbye sea in Africa. Because today, 
a number of shipping lines have to go to Europe before coming back to Ghana if I'm shipping to Ghana from Nigeria, even though some people are doing within the region now, but it's very expensive. So what am I saying in essence? There is a solution in that direction as far as logistics is concerned. And necessity is the mother of invention. If trade increase in Africa, building more road and rail through private sector funds will be easier because they can easily recoup because of truck moving and goods moving more frequently on the African continent. I don't know if I've answered that question from, uh, from I think from Aisha. Uh, there's another question. It says, is there any e-commerce platform for B2B in Africa? Yes, but it's not very, very active. Maybe now. Now, this is where our technology people need to come on board. There is, but it's not very active. It's not very active. We need a very robust B2B platform in Africa. So if, if uh, Oyewale, Fumi Oyewale, if you're an IT person, that's a project you want to take up. That's a project you want to take up. Building a B2B platform where people can be registered and verified and people can place order and buy or place order for, if I'm selling for people to see and, and then uh, uh, post what I'm selling, my selling lead and people can post their buying lead. It's going to be a great platform. They are around now, but it's not very, it's not active enough. I think such a platform should be developed and you must use the same technology to target market different African countries to be able to use that platform to trade. And if it's viable, people are going to register as paid member and then you can get annual subscription from a lot of subscribers. Fumuye Wale, maybe that's one thing you want to consider. All right, let's close today, six already. So I'm glad to see Egypt and Cote d'Ivoire. I'm particularly impressed with Egypt because Egypt is doing 37% and Egypt is not a major producer of cocoa. Egypt is now a major producer of cocoa, and Egypt is doing 37%. So I'm particularly impressed with Egyptians. South Africa is not doing badly, 12.5, and Ghana, of course, 8.44. I would like to see Nigeria on this uh, list <laughs> as one of the major producers of cocoa in West Africa. Following, I think, uh, we have either number three or number four now in Africa, behind Côte d'Ivoire and behind um, Ghana. Behind Côte d'Ivoire and behind Ghana. Okay, Nigeria is actually behind Ghana. Côte d'Ivoire is the largest exporter of cocoa beans, followed by Ghanaians, followed by Nigerians, followed by Cameroonians. But please note, market size for cocoa beans in the world is about 10 billion, 9.2 billion as of 2018, about 10 billion in all. We can't sit down with commodities, we must begin to add value to it. The trend line is growing as usual. You should not be surprised with that now. My theory is correct. <laughs> and lastly, before we close today, remember the competitor, Egyptian, Cote d'Ivoire, South Africa, and Ghanaian, and Senegal, and major exporters. Uh, and major Nigeria is, a, is one of the major exporters of cocoa beans. But Nigeria, look at this. Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, are both major exporter of cocoa beans and they are on the list of chocolate exports. Ghana is number two, Cote d'Ivoire is number one. Nigeria is number three. Nigeria is nowhere to be found here. Nigeria is nowhere to be found here. Why? Because, because, We are not taking production and export of that product seriously. You know, I, I, I was so in the bid to ask question, I was asking a question some time ago. Why are we not doing a lot of chocolate export? Because at least there's a market of over $500 million in Africa. So there's a market. And I realized that I was asking, okay, what does it mean? What does it take from, from cocoa to chocolate bar, from beans to bar? How much? And I realized with 200,000 euro, we can set up. 200,000 euro, you can set up a chocolate factory, 200,000 euro. So I asked myself, so why are we not doing it? Because 200,000 euro is less than 100 million. Let me shock you. People that do cocoa export in Nigeria, 
They are doing, some of them are doing over a billion naira in a year. Two billion naira, five billion, 10 billion. Cocoa export, cocoa beans export in Nigeria. Cocoa beans export in Nigeria. So if we can do that much, why are we not adding value? Why are we not adding value? I know people will say all sorts of things around the reason why, but I've said it severally. If foreigners are coming to Nigeria and they are adding value and cleaning out, that excuse we are giving is not holding water. I'm not holding sway for the government. Government is not doing enough, no doubt. But I'm also saying, sincerely, we can do our part in adding a little value, in adding a little value. Isaba, Isaba, let me unmute you. You want that to talk? Let me unmute you. Maybe you have something that everybody will benefit from. OK, so unmute yourself, Isaba. Let me hear from you on this chocolate matter. Uh, good evening, Mr. Bamdele. Good evening, sir. I always enjoy your program, in fact. Thank you well, for always talking also. You need to be here for me to speak, so I won't speak to air. Your, your program always brings me up, always brings my vision up. You know what, eh? Uh, not, that, not that Cote d'Ivoire are better than Nigeria. You understand? Yes. Because Nigeria has price regulatory board that regulate commodity. Okay. And the Nigeria policy that allows the foreigners to come into Nigeria, they are not in Ghana, they are not in Cote d'Ivoire. Mm, mm. One kg of cocoa without the board giving you the approval. But you can do that in Nigeria, nobody will answer you. Mm. You understand? How much for a crusher? What is, what's the difference between cocoa? When you get the cocoa, mm. you need a dryer. Mm -hmm. And you need a crusher. The crushing meal will crush the cocoa to powder, okay. uh, to, to cake. The butter will come out and the cake will come out. It's the same, the same procedure with soya beans, carnia, granite. Okay. You understand? Yeah. You crush, the oil comes out and the cake comes out. They are the only two things you get. So after you extract the oil out finally, it remains the cake. The cake is your tea and your chocolate. It just adds some new flavors like sugar, glucose, and you are there. Mm, mm, mm. Nothing, no magic, nothing, nothing, nothing. Go to the research. You understand? You are, nothing. You are, you are, valid, you are validating my thought on why. No. So I think it's a mindset thing that's making us not to look at value addition yeah. at all. It's not even cocoa now. A lot of other value addition yeah. we are not interested in. You know? We are just trying to no, you, Or can you just see the difference between cocoa export and chocolate export? Mm. If you call anybody, if you if you if you write any company abroad that produce all those cosmetics and tell them you have you have 30 tons of cocoa butter, they will tell you you are a liar. Because <laughs> one ton of cocoa butter is over five million. Uh, <laughs> you understand? One ton of cocoa butter is over. Go and check it. The was time I told one man, the, even the man was asking for 10 kg. I told the man, I can give you 40 kg. The man said, go and sit down because you need to have a meal. The meal uh, is not up to 20 million naira. You see? Because fine. You just need a, 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 you just need a dryer that will reduce the moisture content from 7% where you buy it to 4%. Okay. 43%. Okay. The cocoa will become very hot. When it enter the machine, because of the butter is so thick, it needs to be hot first. You understand? So that the butter, will so that the butter can melt. Okay. That okay. Will have more. Mm. Because, mm. The, uh, because the more the butter gets cold, the more it gets congealed. That's just yeah. it. The more it get cold, it congeal. So to enable it flow to the saver pit or the saver tank, which of them you are using, he need to be well heated. You understand? Yeah. The cake will come out. No big deal. There is no magic. As soon as the machine crush it, the cake comes out. Why the the butter flows like oil? Because you have already heated it with the oven already. Yeah. Then after you get the cake, 
the cake, what you need to do is just to add some little flavor into it, then rebake it. Your chocolate comes out. Mm. Take back of it just to start learning people now. They will start giving you stories to go and bring your grandmother. Who is your grandmother? Who is your grandfather? <laughs> who is giving you? How thank many business you, have you done? Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> they even put the policy that even the foreign companies, the foreigners, even detect how to sell your cocoa, mm. how to buy your cocoa. Yeah, yeah. You understand? I think that's a major gap in our uh, supply chain. <laughs> That's a Nobody wants to supply chain. There, you know, there was a time when I attended Africa Cashew Alliance. Okay. Dr. Wallow, I told you, we are not crazy about export of commodity. We are crazy about adding value to it. You see the value there. You see the value of just getting even, okay, like if, if, if you take like, let me say soya beans, for example. Okay. Soya beans oil, soya beans oil is after you extract, then the cake, which is supposed to be waste, is animal feed, right? Yeah, yeah. It's animal feed. Then the one of the can here is animal feed. But the one in cocoa is consumable. That, that is it. How much are we buying tea here in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. How much are we buying tea? The tea you have inside that big cup, the tea inside is not up to one, one kg. Go and check it. Those smaller plastic, those smaller ones, they, they go on. They are just like two gram, three gram, four gram. Yeah. And we pay heavily. We, we, we pay heavily for it. Because it's valuable. We are not they, the Ghana is not being more than us in cocoa because I buy cocoa. I travel all the whole state in cocoa. Even I even have my own farm now. They are not doing more than us. It's the government that is not making things okay for us. Let me be frank. <laughs> but if there are people who want to hold into it, yeah, we can start adding value and we'll do well and we'll be recognized. I'm happy to hear that. I and I'll give that, I'll give it out. If there was, uh, was it not last two years, the vice president took it upon himself. Let's okay, let's start adding value to our cocoa here in uh, uh within the, the blue area. They started crushing cocoa instead of exporting. You understand? Mm. That is what we're supposed to be doing. Because when you and when you when you crush it. You can start adding value. Then you're no longer exporting the cocoa. Rather, you will not be exporting the butter to those people who produce high high creams yeah. and other things. Then the the cake will be going for your chocolate. Okay. That is just there's no there's no magic. Nothing you can no nothing to do about it. Thank you very. So my brother, you always encourage always me, but <laughs> I have told you several times that I want to make this thing right. Set all of us up. Set those who want to go into it. Let's start sharing ideas. Let's start meeting. Let's start meeting. Let's see how we can put it. One day, it has to become somewhere big, and the whole world will recognize that we are on top of it. Because that time, we can tell the foreigners that you don't come and dictate in my country. Mm -hmm. One man told me that he want to buy cocoa in Ghana because the man bring things from Ghana. He bring this uh, akoro, this wood from Ghana. Okay. So. He said he wanted to go into cocoa. I told him you cannot buy one kg in Ghana. He, he thought I was joking. When he get to Ghana, he just bought it. He was arrested. But come to Nigeria, you won't buy a 10 truck. Nobody will ask you. Are you serious? You will buy a 10 truck. Nobody will ask how you get it. You just go to one of the association, pay them money before you know it, your cocoa is here. Then when you want to do a, do a export, you go and get a produce, a go to the produce director of a state. He will give you a license. Then you register with Cocoa Association of Nigeria. You are done. You, you move your cocoa, you, 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 you pay your NSP. You're into it. Nobody regulates the price. Nobody discuss what the price is. In what was it not when last three years when cashew dropped down, the Tanzanian government regulated the price. And even they have to subsidize for those farmers so that the price will not fall down. Below what you understand? The government pay for it, but you were able to regulate it, and it's different than what we have. You understand? So if the government fail, does it mean we will fail? Let's start dreaming into that, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, it's been another interesting session today. You can see drop your comment while I play some of my videos. You can drop your comment if you have any other contribution or question why we round up for today.
and so as manufacturers, producers and importers there are solutions to your foreign exchange challenges. Awesome. Hello, I'm Sandra, Comfort Zone Manufacturing. Mr. Frank, Amigo Manufacturing. Fantastic presentation by the way. Thank you. You sounded so confident in your presentation, how are you coping with the current economic recession in the country? You know, as manufacturers we are largely dependent on local market. Many of our finished goods are piled up in the warehouse. Because demands from buyers have reduced, what do you think is the way out? You are right actually, I'm also experiencing the same situation. The current decline is making it difficult to sell locally. But I'm already preparing to take advantage of the African Continental Free Trade Area, IFCFTA. IFCFTA? Are you not aware of the fact that the whole of Africa have come together to sign an agreement to trade together duty-free? And that means, after manufacturing my products I can ship it to 53 African countries without payment of duty. Awesome. Which is an extra market for me. This program is starting next year and I'm already preparing to take advantage of it. Wow thank you so much, how are you going about it? And how can I also prepare for it? Well, I'm currently training myself and other staffs to take advantage of this. And I've found an executive diploma program in export business, from the American Institute of Extended Studies to enable me achieve this. This is great, thanks so much for the information, how can I also enroll for this program? To register for an executive diploma in export business management, and take advantage of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Simply call 0809124449 or send an email to tradacademy at 3 timpexcom Welcome, sir. This is the second time I'm coming to see you. I need to know how to go about this export business. Please do relax, sir. With all due respect, I need to see a manager. You guys need to be able to give me enough information about this export business. I'm sorry, sir. The bank is a financial institution. We offer financial advice to the best of our knowledge. This is just waste of time. My manager might be able to give you some recommendations. Please do hold on. Hello, sir. Please do come with me to my office. So I was told you needed information on export business. Well, sir, a lot of opportunities have passed by me in the past few months. I have received so many orders for my product and services abroad I just don't know how to go about it. Well it's a good thing you came here today. One of Nigerian's foremost trade consulting firm 3T Impex now provides export support services. For both intending and existing exporters. Really? Support services like? Well, name it. Export market advisory, export product advisory. Export skill acquisition e-learning, export pricing advisory, export contract advisory, export paperwork advisory, export finance advisory, to mention just a few. Wow this is like a dream come true, how do I contact them to know more? Simply call 0809124449 or send a mail to tradacademy at 3 timpexcom Export service designed just for you. Subscribe to 3T Export Support Services now. All right, someone is asking a question. Um, he says, um, sorry. Um, when is the next meeting? Um, Benga far showing. The next meeting is next week Thursday by 5 p.m. We have this session every <coughs> every Thursday by 5 p.m. Benga have also dropped the link for you, the link that will help you to have access to the previous episode of this program. This is part nine. Uh, so we've had past one to eight. So you can have access to the previous episode of this program. If you click on that link, 
you take you to Telegram channel. So Telegram channel already have a lot of previous video you can have access to there. So every Thursday by 5 p.m., this program is actually import export platform from 3T Impest Trade Academy. Import export platform. We used to do it on radio before we move online so that we can um, have wider reach and be able to have um, a, this kind of presentation. So for people to be able to learn and also get to know what we are trying to do. Someone's in collaboration, collaboration is key. We need to get in touch with those of us ready to invest. Yes, Garba, let me, you can, Garba, I can, um, I've sent you my number. You can chat me, let me know what you are looking at in terms of investment. I have one or two that might be of interest to you. So you can chat me, Garba Abdumumuni. I've, I've dropped a message for you on WhatsApp, Garba. I said, I've chatted you privately with my number. Um, that's Garuba. Someone also say, good day, Dele. I want to sign up for the executive diploma. Okay, how about Peter? Can you chat me, please? Peter, I just dropped my number for you also. Chat me. I can send the application form to you right away for the diploma program. How about Peter? Please, can you chat me right away uh, about Peter? Um, let me also see. Another person said, Okay, but Peter, I've also seen your email. I hope I, I, I'm, I, I don't miss that. About Peter at gmail.com. Okay. Um, I will drop a mail for you. Okay, Garba also dropped his email. Okay, so I've seen the mail for Garba and about Peter. Let me play the other videos. Um, Wow, man, you are doing quite good. You are not doing bad yourself. How is your business doing these days, with the economic decline here and there? You don't look like you are being affected at all. Well, it's affecting everyone. I just found a way of, you know, expanding market for my services. Really? Tell me more. Let's talk in my office. So basically, I found a way of taking my services to other countries in the world. Hence I don't have to depend so much on the current economic situation in our country. Oh my god this is awesome. But how did you go about it? Well, thanks to 3T Impex and American Institute of Extended Studies, I was able to acquire skills and competence to take my skills to the world. Through Executive Diploma and Service Export Management. That's just great. Is this program just for everyone? You know I'm not into ICT service like you. Well, the following services and many more can be exported. They are ICT, professional services, management consulting, marketing, training and education, engineering and architectural services, entertainment services, customer services and call center, graphics and photography, HR related services, don't get me started on the benefits. Earning in foreign exchange, increased sales volume and so much more. I'm not waiting to hear more. I'm calling 08036522946 right away. You can also send a mail to tradacademy at 3 timpexcom That's it. I'm signing up right away. To sign up or know more about our services, Simply call 0803652946 or send a mail to tradacademy at 3 timpixcom Someone is talking about the father is a total novice. Yet in the, uh, we have a program called From Export Novice to Export Legend, and this is the video. Hey, Paul. What a surprise to see you in the port. Of all places? Life is full of surprises, I guess. You and this your sense of humor. I came to relax at the river bank before I sighted you. So, what on earth brings you to the port? Actually, I came to oversee the export of my products. <laughs> you must be joking, right? <laughs> no, I'm not. 
When did you start producing? Not to talk of exporting? I actually started some few months ago. I now produce and export processed food items. And basically I am here to oversee the shipment myself. Wow. It's been barely 15 months since I last saw you. Won't you tell me how all this happened? <laughs> of course I will. Let's go grab a sit. So how did you become an exporter in such a short time? Well, the last time we met I told you of my plans on exiting paid employment. So I was looking out for a business to go into. A few weeks later, I came across a training program organized by 3T Impex Trade Academy, one of Nigerian's foremost trade consulting companies. Really? Yes, the training is tagged. From export novice to export legend. Sounds great, tell me more. After six months I completed the diploma in export business management. And in another six months, I successfully produced and packaged, even without having a manufacturing company. Amazing. I know right? And all this is aside the free export advisory services, free export license, free books and audio materials, to mention just a few. Wow, thank the heavens I came down to the port today, I am definitely considering this, how can one get started? Simply call 0809-124-4449 or visit www.globaltradeecollege.com. You can also send an email to tradacademy at 3 timpixcom Be a pal, own your own export business, and become an export legend today. All right. Um... Okay, Mr. Benga, all right. Mr. Benga, can you drop me, can you drop your email or you chat me on this number? Uh, Benga Fa Shoi, so I can send you the diploma program. You can chat me on the number I just sent to you now. Uh, So you can chat me on the diploma program. Thank you very much everyone for being able to make it today. Um, see you next week as we continue our conversation. We still have a very long way to go. This will continue till the end of the year actually. We've got so many products to talk up and we have just about one hour to discuss this every week. But I'm sure also for the new year, we're going to have so much conversation still around this. Thank you very much. Your coming make this possible. So we appreciate, deeply, deeply appreciate your coming because your coming also made this possible. See you next week. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.